Another Retina 3C and it's got some film advance problem. As you can see, the film advance lever is sticking out from the body. It doesn't return to the rest position. The shutter is not firing. That's not a good sign. Normally when I see things like that it tells me that the shutter cocking rack is gone. Damaged. It, it doesn't want to return to the rest position. Um, if I, you'd have to force that and of course that would break something. So, a mystery. What will I find with this one? Well I better get the top off and investigate. Before I went to take the top off, first of all, of course, I've got to remove the dial from the top of the meter. So I always look to see where the dial is positioned, because I know roughly where that ASA dial should be. And this is nowhere near it. It's miles away. That meter can't possibly be useful in that position. And I look at the screw here, and there are big scratches on the top of it. So that tells me someone's been in there. Likewise, on the rewind here, there's a scar here where someone's engaged a tool in there. <coughs> Likewise, that shouldn't be the case. So, I'm, I'm forewarned now. I know that the camera has been dealt to by someone who uh, may or may not have known what they were doing. Let's have the rewind knob off. Having found two odd things before I even lift the top is a warning to me that I may well find other things going on inside the camera that uh, I would rather not see. Hold my finger on the top of the meter here so it doesn't lift off as I lift the top cover off. Some of these meters have a screw under here holding the plastic housing. If you allow it to come off with the top you'll break that every time. This little piece of rubber is glued inside the top housing here. It holds down the meter at the end. I'm pleased to see that's still present. That meter can lift off. I'll lift off the rewind, the film release button. I'll lift off the shutter release. I'm looking inside the top of the camera, and there's a lot of grit and dust down the back here. There's some visible around the rangefinder at this point. The rack, the teeth on the rack are misshapen. They're distorted at this point. The rack is probably, it's further back than it should be. It's about a tooth too far back. I don't think that rack will be useful. Just running my tweezers over the tips of those teeth. I can feel that the surface is raised. In other words, the teeth are very distorted. I think that's going to need a new shutter cocking rack. So, into it I suppose. Right, back when I find more. On the Retina 3C series, this screw here, this shoulder screw here, forms the support for this rack and it keeps the rack in firm contact with the gear at this point. It's important that the screw is not loose. This one is loose and wobbly. Yeah, it's, it was hard, it was there was about a quarter of a turn of movement there. It was just loose, so it wasn't holding things firmly. This screw here. Now likewise, this screw over here, that's loose. These two screws 
hold the bush on the top of the film advance in position. So when it's loose, it means that the whole shaft can move backwards and forwards. The fact that that bush was loose, allowing the shaft to move this way, and the fact that this screw itself was loose, allowing the rack to move this way, means that the, the rack was not held in firm contact with the teeth of the gear, and that's how it's become damaged. Basically, it is just pulled away from the hair, and I can see from the shape of these teeth that as this revolved, it pulled in, pulled past the teeth on this rack, damaging the rack, and effectively jumping a tooth. And that's why it wouldn't return to the rest position. You'll see now that the film advance lever, I'll zoom you back out because we're losing our focus here. With the rack completely gone from the camera, there's no problem with the film advance lever. That swings back to the rest position, no problem at all. So we definitely need a new shutter cocking rack. And the cause of the problem was definitely that these two screws were loose. It's also possible that the screw on the centre is loose. We'll check for that. This one here. No, that's tight enough. If that's loose, it allows the gear to slop around a little bit. And again, that can create enough um, backlash in the, in the teeth to uh, cause a problem. So this should be... A simple job, but I've said that before. Well, I've pretty much got this camera stripped down to the basics now. Now look at the state of this. Here's the shutter release on the lens standard. Now the finger on the end of this has been bent completely out of shape. That didn't happen by accident. There's no way you can do that by forcing the shutter release or something else. Someone has reached in here with a pair of pliers or a screwdriver and leave it on that in order to um, attempt to make it release the shutter earlier in the travel of the shutter release shaft I would think that's got to be squared up, that's certainly wrong I'm having a look now at the shutter release on the shutter itself because it's not uncommon to find that this has also been bent when people have been doing silly things like that no, that appears to be okay. So that part's good. So I've got my body here now, stripped down, empty. The mechanical components are waiting to go in the degreaser. Some parts I'll clean by hand, like this piece. The body components. And here's the body casting itself. It's quite dirty. A um, lot of evidence of dried grease and so forth. There's quite a mess on the bottom here, that's just the residue of the adhesive that held the leatherette in place. I want to get all that rubbish off there, I think. I'm going to look closely at the leatherettes on the front of the camera to see if there's any sign of them lifting off. Usually, if they're going to lift off, they come out, you find one of the corners peels back easily. I think that's okay. There's no Zeiss bumps on the back, it's quite a good example. So I'll clean up all this filth, all this dirt and dust and old grease. The mechanical parts can soak in the degreaser while I'm doing that. Once I've got all the body cleaned and ready to go, I'll work through the other components, which means cleaning, stripping and cleaning the range finder and the shutter, of course. Cleaning the top cover, making sure the glass is all sparkly and new. And and reassemble everything. Here you can see the cocking rack from this particular camera and I hope you can see that these teeth here one, two, three, are very distorted. They're um, damaged and I don't think they can be trued back up in any useful way in order to make it a useful cocking rack again. This by comparison is a new rack and the teeth are all undamaged and uh, undistorted and this is what's going into the camera I'm down to my last few Kodak manufactured cocking racks now I had a good number but they're, they're all gone 
I've got a, probably three left after this. And then I'll be into ones I've purchased from Micro Tools. Well, it's all back together again now. Everything's working nicely. The uh, exposure meter's not a not a hundred percent. The selenium cell has obviously lost some sensitivity, and it doesn't respond accurately across the whole range. But that is um, unfortunately extremely normal with sixty-year-old selenium cells. But apart from that. The camera is working nicely, cocks and fires, nice and smooth film advance, range finders nice and clean, uh, accurate, everything's good. Focus is smooth, so I would say that this camera is good to go and it can join the growing stack of cameras here that one day will go home once the post office is open again. Thanks for watching.